Guten tag, WAP. This is Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we go over Unit 3, Day 9. Today we're going to talk about the Ottoman Empire in the modern period, how the Ottoman Empire is going to try to reform itself. The next four videos will be about civilizations that try to westernize and reform, Ottoman Empire, China, Japan, and Russia. Today, Ottoman Empire. But let's get started with our daily punishment. I hate how funerals are always at 9 a.m. I'm not really a morning person. <laughs> Key terms for today, Janissary, Selim III, Mohammed II, Sick Man of Europe, the Young Turks, the Tanzimat Reforms, Abdul Hamid, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ahmad, and the Mahadis Jihad. We're going to go over the problems facing the Ottoman Empire in the modern period, the impact of reform in the Ottoman Empire. We'll talk about Muhammad Ali in Egypt and the Mahadis Revolt and its significance. So by the early 1700s, the Ottomans were in complete retreat. We, the Ottomans had existed ever since like the 13-1400s. By the 1700s, they'd really fallen behind Western Europe. They had weak rulers and problems with succession, harem politics. There were power struggles with regional governors who colluded with each other to drain the treasury funds. Religious leaders were more conservative, so they were falling behind in math and science. They were becoming more xenophobic. And the Janissary commanders reformed to re refused to reform the military because they thought they would get, lose power. And they were losing land from countries like Russia. At this time, the Ottomans were known as the sick man of Europe. Britain will prop up the Ottoman Empire in the 1800s. They didn't want Russia to conquer them, uh, but they were very weak. Selim III is going to be the first ruler in the 1800s to try to offer a reform. He's going to offer modest reforms in the bureaucracy and military. He wanted to have a new army and navy. The Janissaries at the beginning were the elite soldiers. They used muskets and stuff. But at this time, uh, in the 1800s, they were uh, outgunned by European armies, which used rifles and stuff. The Janissaries did not want the reforms because they would have lost their position of power. So they will rebel and kill him in 1807-1808. 20 years later, Muhammad II is going to be more successful. With the help of European advisors, he's going to build a small professional army. He's going to drive the Janissaries out and start to do reform. He'll establish a Western-style bureaucracy with a Westernized army and European advisors. From 1839 to 1876, this is the period of reforms in the Ottoman Empire. They're called the Tanzimat Reforms. They're going to introduce westernization in all aspects of Ottoman Empire, education, transportation, technology, media, and finally a constitution. The reforms, however, will be, do little to help the economy as local artisan industries suffer from European competition and they will not do anything for women's rights. The state, the state will be strengthened by these reforms, but the dynasty will feel threatened by change later on. Sultan Abdul Hamid is going to respond to this threat uh, to his power by shifting into absolutism and becoming a dictator. He's going to uh, abolish the new constitution and restrict personal freedoms. There will be a group of Ottoman people that want the reforms and want to go even further with them. They're called the Young Turks, also known as the Society for Union and Progress, the Ottoman Society for Union and Progress. They'll be exiled and they will begin plans for a rebellion against the Sultan, in 1908, the Young Turks will successfully remove him. They will restore the constitution and civil liberties, and they'll install a puppet Sultan. But at this time, parts of the empire uh, in the Middle East are going to start to push for independence. Some of these areas are going to be absorbed by the European imperialist. The Ottoman Empire is slowly dying regardless. They will try to enter World War I to get back some of the land they lost, but they will fail, and the Ottoman Empire will collapse after World War I. Let's talk about the crisis in other Arab lands. In 1798, uh, Napoleon had invaded Egypt and defeated the Ottoman Mamluk vassals and took the Nile Valley. Soon, France would remove Napoleon from Egypt, and they'll install an Albanian Ottoman named Muhammad Ali to govern Egypt. In 1811, Muhammad Ali will use his European influence to reform the local governments and the local military. 
uh, which will kind of free Egypt from further Ottoman control. He's going to uh, attempt with limited success to reform the Egypt's economy. To maintain security, he'll ally with landlords down the Nile Valley into Sudan to control the peasants. But this will fail as they resist his reforms because he tried to reform and modernize the economy. And the peasants will become even more impoverished. He'll spend too much time during this time using his money to wage war. He did was one of the first Egyptian leaders to try to modernize Egypt. He's considered the father of modern Egypt. But ultimately, his reforms will not be successful. Egypt will become open to, for intrusion by Europeans as a result of this disarray. Ali's successors are going to abandon his reforms. They're going to allow the landlords to profit at the expense of the peasantry. Egypt will become a single crop producer, cotton. Foreign investment will build the Suez Canal, which was going to be completed in 1869. Muslim intellectuals and political activists look for ways to protect Egypt from weak rule. Some will call for jihads against foreign infidels, against Europeans. Others will stress the need for Western education and technology and blending it with traditional Islam. In 1882, Ahmed Orabi is going to lead a revolt against the Khedive, who is like the British puppet. Britain is going to intervene to protect the status quo. After this, Britain is going to make Egypt a protectorate and set up a puppet, Khedives, which will be controlled by British consuls. And Britain is going to be controlling Egypt off and on indirectly until after World War I. Let's talk about the Mahadis Revolt. The British are going to be drawn into Egypt's conflict with northern Sudan. The Muslims of northern Sudan are going to back Muhammad Ahmed, who is a religious leader. Uh, he was a Mahadi, which is like a religious Muslim priest. The Muhammad Ahmed is going to call for a religious jihad against the British, a religious sanctioned war. He was upset that Britain was banning the slave trade. He was upset about Western European influence on Egypt. And he was upset about Western values that he thought were corrupting uh, Egypt and the Sudan. The Mahadis are going to use guerrilla tactics. They're going to win control over the Sudan. Soon after these early victories, he's going to die. He'll be replaced with Khalifi Abdali. Under his rule, a strong central government will be established with strict control by the Islamic right, which has continued to threat, threaten European positions in the region. In 1896, the British will send an army under General Frederick Kitchener and they'll defeat Abiyali at the Battle of Abdurman. Strange fact, this was the last battle that had a cavalry charge. Um, some European countries will try to do cavalry charges in World War I also. Uh, this is like the last real successful one uh, when they try to do cavalry charges against tanks, but those were problematic. As a result of this, uh, after the British winning, Egypt and the Sudan will fall directly under British control. Let's talk one more thing about the Ottoman Empire. There will be a series of wars in the early 1900s in the Balkan region, which you could see on the map right here. These are the little yellow countries. Bulgaria, Greece, Serbia, and Montenegro will be free from the Ottoman Empire by 1900. This is going to lead to Balkan Wars against the Ottoman Empire. This will, they'll also fight each other in World War I. It's going to be a very unstable region. There'll be ethnic and religious tension between Serbs, Christians, Muslims. And there'll be a series of wars in this area where like the uh, Serbia, for example, is going to try to have areas break off from the Ottoman Empire that are ethnically Serb. They're going to want to take over land from the Ottoman Empire that has a big Serb minority. There's going to be a huge amount of nationalism. And these things are all going to contribute to World War I, and they'll contribute to the death of the Ottoman Empire. They're also going to affect this area in the Balkans all the way up until the 1990s. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Until next time, d -d -d deuces, deuces, deuces.